lesson, we're going to be talking about what is known as the crowding out effect of deficit finance fiscal policy. In previous lessons, we studied two other effects of fiscal policies known as the tax multiplier and the spending multiplier. In those lessons, we learned how a particular increase in government spending or a particular decrease in taxes can lead to a proportionally larger increase in aggregate demand and total output in the economy through what is known as the multiplier effect. On a recent episode of Econ Talk, a podcast by economics professor Russell Roberts from George Mason University, economist Valerie Ramey of the University of California talked to the professor about the multiplier effect. The multiplier is a concept that comes from the good old-fashioned traditional Keynesian model that many people may have seen in their first course in macroeconomics. And it's simply asking the following. If the government increases its spending by $1, how much will overall GDP or output increase? So a multiplier of 1 means that if the government increases its spending by $1, GDP will increase by $1. If we have a multiplier of 1.5, it means that government, an increase in government spending of $1.50 or of $1 will increase GDP by $1.50. Now, since GDP consists of the sum of government spending, consumer purchases, and investment, a multiplier of 1 is basically saying that the government increase in $1 is not leading to more consumption or investment or net exports, which is yet a fourth component. It says it's just going straight through to GDP and not really stimulating the private economy. So people are really looking for multipliers greater than one in order for short-run stimulus policies to have a good effect. If an increase in government expenditures leads to further increases in private consumption and investment, then it is likely that an expansionary fiscal policy will lead to an even larger increase in aggregate demand than the initial change in spending itself. There is a competing theory about the use of fiscal policies, however. This theory is known as the crowding out effect. Today we'll be exploring the possibility that an increase in government spending or a decrease in taxes financed by borrowing from the federal government can in fact lead to a decrease in overall aggregate demand in the economy if that borrowing drives up private interest rates and crowds out the amount of private spending in the economy. Once again, let's let Valerie Ramey of the University of California explain about the crowding out effect. And that's what we've traditionally called crowding out. Yes. So if the government increases its spending by $1 and we see that GDP increases by $0.60, cents, that suggests that that government spending is crowded out some kind of private spending, such as investment or consumption or net exports. Before we begin illustrating the crowding out effect on the aggregate demand aggregate supply model, we first must introduce a new graph into our analysis. Let's look at the market for loanable funds that we see here on the left. Let's examine the demand for loanable funds and the supply of loanable funds and define what these terms refer to. First let's talk about what loanable funds is. Loanable funds refers to private money available in the nation's banking system for firms and households to borrow in order to finance private investments in things such as capital goods and homes. Therefore, the demand for loanable funds refers to the private demand among households and firms for investments in homes or capital. Private investment in the economy is dependent on the level of interest rates in the economy. As we can see, at lower interest rates, the quantity of funds demanded for private investment by household and firms is greater. We'll call this Q1 at an interest rate of IR1. On the other hand, at higher interest rates, the quantity of funds demanded for private investment is lower. Of course, this has to do with how households and firms view the interest rate that they are charged on a particular loan. At higher interest rates, firms must pay the bank that they borrowed the money from a greater amount in over the lifespan of the loan, whereas at lower interest rates, firms must pay back less money to the bank from which they borrowed the money. Therefore, there exists an inverse relationship between the interest rate in the economy and the demand for loanable funds. The supply of loanable funds represents the savings of households and firms in the nation. We can observe that at higher interest rates, households are willing and able to save more money in the banking system 
due to the fact that they earn a greater return on their savings when interest rates are high. On the other hand, when interest rates are low, the quantity of funds available in the loanable funds market will be lower due to the fact that at low interest rates, households are willing and able to save less of their earned income. The same goes for firms. When interest rates are high, firms are less willing to demand funds for investment, but they're more willing to put money in banks and save it, which makes it available for others to borrow. At lower interest rates, firms have a great demand for loanable funds with which they can invest cheaply in new capital, but they're willing to supply a lesser quantity of funds. Therefore, there is a direct relationship between interest rate and the supply of loanable funds. So that is our loanable funds market. We have a downward sloping demand curve representing the demand from households and firms for funds for private investment in homes and capital goods. We have an upward sloping loanable funds supply curve representing the willingness of households and firms to save money. At higher interest rates, firms and households wish to save more, yet borrow less. At lower interest rates, households and firms wish to save less and borrow more. Now, what does the loanable funds market have to do with fiscal policy? The question we must now ask is, does a government's fiscal policy have any effect on the loanable funds market? The answer to that question is, well, maybe. If a government is running a balanced budget, in other words, every dollar spent by the government comes from taxpayer money, then no, the government has no effect on the loanable funds market. However, if a government engages in an expansionary fiscal policy, which means taxes are lowered while government spending increases, this leads to what we call a budget deficit. A budget deficit occurs when a government spends more than it collects in taxes. We have to ask the question, where does a government get the money that it spends beyond what it collects in taxes? And the answer is, in the private loanable funds market. The government becomes a borrower in the market for loanable funds. In other words, the demand for loanable funds no longer represents only households and firms. It could also include the government. So how would that affect the market for loanable funds? If the government becomes a borrower in the market for loanable funds, then the demand for loanable funds will increase in the economy. So we'll call this demand with G, indicating the increase in government spending that must have been financed through borrowing in the loanable funds market. When the government enters the market for loanable funds and has to borrow from private banks in the economy, just like households and firms do, this predictably drives up the equilibrium interest rate in the economy. There is now more competition for the scarce funds available to the private sector due to the government's involvement in the market for loanable funds. Overall, there will be a greater quantity of funds available for overall spending in the economy. In other words, the quantity will increase, the quantity supplied will increase due to the increased demand and the higher interest rates. Households will be willing and able to save more money in the economy. But what does this mean for private spending? The demand for loanable funds, which represents households and firms spending or investments in homes and capital, the quantity demanded will fall. Yes, overall demand for loanable funds increased, but the biggest chunk now in the loanable funds market consists of the demand from government. So as we see, while there is more overall spending in the economy, private spending in the economy has actually decreased from QE to QD1, as we see here. Overall spending has increased. However, a big chunk of this is new government spending. So government spending increases, but only at the expense of less private consumption and less private investment. So the increase in government spending is somewhat offset by this fall in private spending in the economy. Households and firms must now compete with the government for the limited amount of funds available in the private sector for their own borrowing and spending. The higher interest rates that result from this government's borrowing in the private sector reduces private investment and consumption, and therefore the increase in government spending is crowded out by the decrease in investment and consumption among private households and firms. Let's look at our graph on the right, the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, and see what happens when AD increases following a particular increase in government spending. So let's make some assumptions here looking at this graph. 
let's assume that the full employment level of output is $500 billion more than the recessionary level of output, which we'll call YR. Let's assume that the government has calculated that the marginal propensity to consume in the economy is 0 0.8. Therefore, the change in government spending needed to bring about the full employment level of output is the desired change in GDP, which is 500 billion, divided by the multiplier. Now, what is the multiplier? We learned in a previous lesson that the multiplier for spending is 1 over 1 minus the MPC, which in this case would be 5. So the government calculates that a $100 billion increase in government spending should bring about the full employment level of output of $500 billion greater than the equilibrium level of output. So the government increases its spending by $100 billion. What if, however, the multiplier effect is much smaller than the government predicted, and in fact it is less than one? How could this be? If the increase in interest rates resulting from the government's need to borrow from the private sector leads to a decrease in private spending in the economy, then this increase in AD that I've shown in the graph here from AD to AD1 will be significantly less. The crowding out effect essentially reduces the effectiveness of expansionary fiscal policy because any increase in government spending will be offset by decreases in private spending in the economy. So if the crowding out effect occurs, then the actual increase in aggregate demand may only be out to AD2. The multiplier effect will lead to a much greater increase in aggregate demand if this theory of the Keynesian spending multiplier holds true. However, if the increase in government spending is financed by a budget deficit, which requires the government to borrow from the private sector, and this private borrowing drives up equilibrium interest rates and reduces the level of private spending, then the ultimate increase in aggregate demand will be actually less than the initial increase in government spending. So what can we conclude? We can conclude that if crowding out occurs, then the multiplier will be less than one. A particular increase in government spending Let's scroll down here. In other words, the change in G of 100 billion may lead to an increase in AD of less than 100 billion. This is the crowding out effect. If crowding out is real, if the increase in government spending drives up interest rates and reduces the amount of private spending in the economy, then an increase in government spending of a particular amount will have actually a smaller effect on total demand in the economy than the increase in government spending itself. As you can see, the crowding out effect indicates that expansionary fiscal policy will be much less effective than the multiplier effect indicates that it will be. The multiplier effect indicates that an increase in G will multiply itself through further increases in private spending in the economy. The crowding out effect indicates the exact opposite. An increase in G will crowd out private spending and therefore be very ineffective at increasing aggregate demand and output in the economy. So that wraps up this lesson on the crowding out effect. We'll do one more video on crowding out in which we look at the loanable funds market and we examine another interpretation of the crowding out effect.